As a 3D lover, I've always worked with various software to achieve the best results, which means I've spent a lot of time learning each one. But nowadays, one of them has advanced so much that it covers a lot of areas, allowing you to complete projects without needing to switch to another software. And as you can see from the title of this video, that software is none other than Blender. I had never done a project entirely in Blender before, so I decided to test it out with a simple ice cream. What you'll see in this video is the result of challenging myself in Blender. But as always, the hardest step is... Starting Blender. <laughs> Welcome to reality. Oh. <laughs> you know Blender wouldn't do this kind of work. Okay, I picked this image as a reference and let's go. Let us go. 90% of models start with a simple cube. A little scaling. And of course, a few loop cuts and some vertex tweaking. Now let's use subdivision surface to see what's going on. Three levels enough. Instead of lining these vertices one by one, I'll select them all and use the shear button. One of my favorites, and I'll symmetrize the whole thing, because mirror is not my type. And again some adjustments to ensure we're getting closer to the reference. Looks nice so far. Let's move on to the bottom part which needs inset, scaling and extrude. I played around with the vertices a bit to get a logical result. Okay, another part, another cube, three level subdivision and the rest of the story. I don't need these vertices, so select and goodbye and align these thanks to Shear again. Oh, the music ended too soon. Let me add another one. Okay, I'm adding a sphere here because I want to subtract from the main body. Finally, after doing the paperwork, we get to the sculpting part. Oh, don't, don't panic, there's artifacts. So I'll start with the Molterize modifier and three levels of subdivision to begin with. Alright, this part was completely new to me, and I know nothing about sculpting in Blender. So I watched some YouTube videos for help like this from Filmesh, and with my experience from working with ZBrush, I just started sculpting. Okay, enough with this music. Compared to ZBrush, I would say Blender is more user-friendly, but I couldn't find some similar commands I worked with there. Although ZBrush is way more complicated to use at first glance. Actually, way more complicated. I used this alpha which I made from this photo to simulate the vanilla part. And following this image, I used the draw sharp brush to create some bite marks. And after minutes, not bad. I also created some alphas to simulate the almonds with one more subdivision level. Honestly, I spent about half an hour adding the almonds. You know, perfectionism really slows you down. And for the final touch, I used the mesh filter to smooth out the entire surface a bit, and I liked it. Whew. 
You have no idea how much I hate notes. Anyway, for the texturing of this ice cream, I didn't want to go too realistic, because if you look at an ice cream packaging closely, they often stray a bit from reality to attract more attention. So following along with this tutorial, I created a decent material by using a mix of brown and cream colors to create a mask for the almonds. I also added some roughness and noise texture to break up the uniformity of the chocolate model. And nothing much. Lighting in Blender was way easier than I expected, no doubt. The ability to manipulate the lights directly in viewport is so convenient. I'd say still not as good as Marvel set, but it's really easy to work with lights and adjust them quickly, which is crucial for getting good results fast, especially compared to 3ds Max. Uh, I'm an old 3ds Max user by the way. And the final result.